Welcome to the Money Mastermind Show. Let's talk money. And welcome to the Money Mastermind Show. Do you know how much the average wedding costs? According to the Not.com, the average wedding is over thirty thousand um, dollars. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of money in my book. Tonight, we're going to talk about how to spend less than the average, maybe even a lot less. And joining us tonight to talk wedding cost is Sandy Smith of YesIAmCheap.com. Welcome to our show, Sandy. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. And the rest of the Money Mastermind show is Kyle Prevo of YoungandThrifty.ca, Miranda Marquit of Planting Money Seeds, Peter Anderson of Bible Money Matters, Tom Drake of the Canadian Finance Blog, and myself, Glenn Craig of Free From Broke. If you are out there watching us live and you go to our event page, we have a questions app there. So if you have any questions regarding wedding costs and how to save money, drop them in there and we will be happy to get to them. So Sandy, um, I want to start off before we talk about wedding costs and, and just say congrats. Um, my understanding is the reason you're here is because you recently got married. I did. I found some sucker to get married to. <laughs> <laughs> There's somebody so, out there for all of us, right? Somebody, exactly. So <laughs> now he's shackled to me for the rest of his life. Wow. <laughs> Good for you, though. So great. So great. Yes. <laughs> when you make it sound so romantic like that. Um, no, how can you resist me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, congratulations. Um, now, if I understand correctly, um, your wedding costs lots less than what the national average is, right? And, and and if I could just, before you jump into there, if we're talking the national average is over 30,000, that yep. means there's probably a lot that are more than that. Yep, like Manhattan, for example. <laughs> So, so talk about yours. How, how did you end up spending so much less? And if you don't mind telling our audience how much you actually spent um, on your on your wedding. So my target was five thousand dollars, and I spent um, almost five thousand dollars, four thousand nine hundred ninety-eight dollars and twenty cents. <laughs> wow! Now, nice, right. nice. Right on point. If if I could mention also here and qualify that. You don't live basically in the middle of nowhere. We're not talking like you didn't do this in the back farm somewhere and just no. have friends and family and have everybody decorated. You did not this that in there's anything city. wrong with that. Hey, That's right. well, I, I have no access to a farm, so I just wouldn't be able to do that myself. Um, but even in the New York City area, that farm is going to cost you a whole lot of money. Yes. Um, but you did that in New York City and managed to spend less than people spend on parking in New York City. It's true. <laughs> I, did. I did. So it's possible anywhere, even if you know there are no cows invited to the wedding. <laughs> so, why do people tend to spend so much on their weddings? I mean, I I think we could somehow guess, but I mean, why, why does it get so crazy? I think you get just so caught up in having this event. It's a really big thing and you want everything that you've seen on television, everything that you dreamed of, you want to invite all of your friends and all of your family and your friends of your friends of your cousins of your friends to the wedding to share and like the joy and the love. And you kind of the costs get out of control. You you forget about the costs and forget about focusing on the marriage of the two people and instead on this party, this huge event. And it goes very fast, the costs anyway. Well, you know, the event too actually goes pretty fast. I mean, it's usually That's four it. to six hours, but you know, when you're when you're the couple, it it just flips right by. Yeah, it? Um, it does. My husband said he wished it lasted longer, and meanwhile, I was like, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm <laughs> playing this bad boy. <laughs> Time for everybody to go. Yes, um, <laughs> making it shorter would be one way to to make it a little less expensive too, I guess. But uh, that's not always practical. Um, do you think it's like is it narcissism? To some degree, is that people say, hey, come look at me. Now, you said part of it is the joy and love. And, and you know, yeah. I think that's an important part that I think gets lost in a lot of weddings that get planned. I don't think it's necessarily the narcissism. It's just that 
especially for females, you get sold a fairy tale, a fantasy. You're supposed to have this dream thing. You're supposed to be, it's your day. You're the princess of the day. And you kind of want it to be the focus to be on you and this event. And um, I don't know that it's narcissism per se, but we've been sold that this is what we should expect of a wedding. Um, especially if you're a female. Um, when I got engaged, funny enough, when I got engaged, um, one of the lines that I shared on the blog is, is from one of the feminists who said, because I'm female, I'm expected to aspire to marriage. Um, and we do. And we get sold this whole bag of goods that you have to have this whole event and you're the princess and it's your day. And so you want to have all those things because you kind of grow up hearing about those things and, Maybe going to weddings where they are big and it, the focus is on um, the bride for a lot of the, the times. And you kind of want the same thing that you've seen other people have as well, especially with all the wedding shows on television. <laughs> I, I think actually uh, you make a good point there because one of the reasons I ended up with a cheap wedding, I, my wedding cost less than $3,000, uh, but this was like 13 years ago. But... <laughs> But, uh, and I, and I lived in the middle of nowhere, but, but we had a, you know, we had, we had a reception in New York, um, in upstate and we had a reception in Idaho Falls and everything cost less than $3,000. Uh, but I think part of the reason why my wedding was so cheap is because I never cared about getting married. And Ooh. so when, when it finally happened, I was engaged. I had no preconceived notions. I had no preconceived notions about how it had to be. Right. or what I, I had to have or what my dress had to look like. And when we got engaged, we had two months to do this thing and pull it together. And so that also forced us to be like, well, <laughs> this is this is what we have to work with here. Yeah. And so there was a lot of, you know, do it yourself and, and putting it together. So I think that helps when you decide, when you don't have those preconceived notions. And I think that you make a very good point that a lot of the reason why people spend so much is like, I have to have these things. I have to have this DJ. I have to have this fantastic dress. I have to have this meal. I have to have this. And there has to be these things. So, yeah. And, and I had none of that because I never cared about getting married. So we're sitting here with four guys who are all married, right? <laughs> and I bet they didn't have the same pressure at all. Oh, no. No, you're not. Well, it's like it's pressure by proxy, really. <laughs> I mean, like, there's a lot of pressure there not to screw up her date. That's yeah. true. Like, you want to be the reason her date doesn't that go that. wrong, especially if you spent thirty thousand dollars. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Peter can tell us yeah, all I about can, that. I can pay it all about expensive weddings. Thankfully, I didn't have to pay a cent of it. Oh, no, I paid for the whole thing because my wife was their their little girl, you know. But, you know, I think it's Jim Gaffigan, the comedian, who, who says that uh, our wedding day is the one day that we can all pretend to be royalty. And, uh, you know, the, the woman is the princess and the guy's the lord, lording all over over everybody in the crowd. And all our family and friends are our vassals. And we sit up at this head table and lord over everybody. And, you know, we really do spend like royalty, too, on that day. Most people. I mean, look at the average. It's over $30,000. So, yep. wow. but, you know, I mean. <laughs> My family, yeah, we, we spent over thirty thousand dollars for our wedding, and it's just you know it's just the small things that add up very very quickly. You have the flowers, you have the DJ, you have the venue where you're having it. That was one of our our biggest ones was the venue. Uh, we had it at a, a country club here in the Twin Cities, and I mean the place is so beautiful, but it's so expensive as well. <laughs> you know, I'm just wondering. You know, I, this is going off a little bit of a tangent, but uh, you know. If more people took the weddings in Game of Thrones to heart. You know, extravagant. <laughs> You're they, all gonna die. It never seems to play out so well. Spoiler and alert. You life insurance before going to a wedding with Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's everybody else. If people agree to host it, then maybe you have to think twice about it. Um, <laughs> so you, you, you got lucky there, Peter. <laughs> yeah. Is it, is it all societal? I mean, is it just all the pressure? Have we been, uh, Disney-fied with a, the old princess cartoons, and, and that kind of like pushes us towards these big extravaganzas. You know, because I, I I find it interesting that we're in a, a point of history where there's a lot of awareness about women having really true equality. You yeah. Know, like actually getting salaries that might be equal to what men have been getting um, historically. 
Um, but then we have this underlying current that seems to run counter to it. So, you know, how does that play out? I mean, certainly, look, it, it, it's your wedding. It, yeah. We should have our day in the sun, right? But there's some things, I think, that don't change. So, whereas, it, I'm definitely one of these females who believe in equality, and, I, and I'll be one of those tough females fighting to be treated just like the guys. But in some in some respects, we still want to be treated like women. We still want to be that delicate flower sometimes, you know what I mean? And the wedding is one of the quintessential times when the focus is mostly on the bride. You know, people can talk about the, what the woman's wedding dress was like. They don't remember that the bride, that groom even had clothes on, you know? Unless you're wearing something outrageous. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you show up wearing something crazy then, you know, but it's, it, the focus is on the bride. So that's one where maybe we're, we're speeding up when it comes to equality in a lot of things, but I don't know that we even want to improve on equality when it comes to weddings for the expectation for men and women. I feel like, you know, a lot of us, and I'll be the person to admit it, we like the attention sometimes. And a wedding is, you know, the focus is on you. That's why I wonder, you know, how much of it is societal and how much is it, you know, that yeah, the but, woman generally wants to have a big day for themselves. But how much is that socialized, though, from birth? Mm -hmm. When, when you're true. told, when you're told from birth that, you know, especially like in the society I grew up, I was an anomaly. In my community, I was an anomaly where I did not think about my wedding. I did not plan my colors. I did not plan this, that, and the other thing. All of the other girls around me knew what they wanted their dresses to look like. They knew what this had to happen. They had their day planned out. And, but they were told from birth that the most important thing that they could do, the very most important, sorry, I'm getting out of my soapbox, but <laughs> that they were told from birth that the very most important thing they could do was get married. And they were told right. that this was the most special, best day of their life, and the only thing that could come close to that was when they popped out another child. And so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Let the hate mail roll in if anybody's watching. Preach, sis. I <laughs> preach. <laughs> But so so part of that is I mean how much of that is socialized for us to say yes the wedding has to be about me and the wedding is my day because we are told from birth that that is the most important thing that we can aspire to and if you don't have a man yeah what you know you're you're a crazy biatch who <laughs> 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 couldn't get one <laughs> right <laughs> as someone who's uh, who's uh at like peak wedding season like you know, roughly peak wedding age, statistically speaking, I think the whole thing's just driven by vengeance because you've been asked to attend so many of these things and sit through, especially as a guy, you're supposed to show me ultra hot days in, in pies. It's just not pleasant the majority of the time until everyone starts drinking. So like, I'm going to make all these guys pay because they made me pay. So it's, it's, know, all, it's actually just a series of retaliation feel, stretching back as right. far as the human race. I sort of felt the opposite with mine. You know, I wanted to make it as frictionless as possible for people and just like everybody to have a fun time. You know? I and, like uh, the revenge angle, though. <laughs> and I, don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's just about the, the women either. Like, my wife had her dress and picked up the colors and everything, but I was very invested in having a really good party. <laughs> so I, I, I did a, a lot of the planning towards that. And, uh, I think I actually ended up with probably a bigger guest list too. <laughs> than oh, so did my so, husband. Yeah, uh, so two it's, thirds it's, of our guests were his, not mine. Yeah. So, so, yeah, the guys, the guys can be just as involved sometimes. So. <laughs> yeah, let's be hidden little... divas, the guys, right? Yeah. Kind of come out I like of it. I like how you said you were focused on having a great party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I think I think Peter had a, it's an interesting point where you talked about it, it was your 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 wife's parents that paid for it if I'm correct right yes and I think you know we're talking historically of how things are changing I think that was a lot more the norm not too long ago and now that's starting to change a little bit you know because well, weddings are super expensive and, and B you know nowadays we're folks, older. Well, we're, we're not older anymore. And mm -hmm. our folks might not be able to afford such an expensive wedding when they are, have to deal with retirement themselves. We're not in True. an age of pensions and, and such that are sitting there waiting. So, you know, to, to have that, that $30,000 bill, 
Um, that's that's a lot of money that could be going elsewhere. So now we're actually <laughs> a house or, or retirement for the parents at least, yeah. you know, or, or it could be college for like another sibling or you know who, who knows what else. Um, so it, we are also coming into an interesting time where people are, are more and more paying for their own weddings. Mm-hmm. So I mean, do you think that plays on how much people are spending? Like, do you see a lot of people still spending a lot on themselves and paying for it? Or do you think that's like, you know what, I'm just still going to pay whatever I'm going to pay and, and I'm just going to eat it. I mean, it. statistically, you see that, yeah, people are paying more for themselves. And because we're all starting off with student loans and things like that, we're not starting off debt-free. We're, I think, a little bit more conscientious um, when we are paying for our own weddings versus when the parents are, you know, kicking in ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, then you know you don't focus so much on the money because you don't feel the pain as much. It's mom and dad's money. Um, but when it's yours and you're engaged and you have to save for this money or it's coming out of an account somewhere, um, then I think there's a, there's a bit of a, a hesitation on spending. Um, more than you probably would if somebody else was paying. Listen, when I go out to eat, if somebody else is paying, I'm ordering the lobster. If I'm paying, you know, I'm on the salad side of the menu. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, you just got married, man. Your husband must have uh... <laughs> bought some lobster. Yeah. He knew what he was getting into. You may not have paid for the wedding, but he paid for the date. Well, maybe not. I don't know, actually. So, um, no, I, I, I don't know. When I look at the stats, though, the average cost increased, actually, um, $2,000 from the year before, almost, or actually um, $1,300 from the year before. So somebody's spending money somewhere. But it might just be that the fact that the higher-end um, locations, like your Manhattan, where it's over $70,000, is increasing at a pace that's, you know, a rate that's outpacing a lot of other places. I, I wonder also, is it, is it a leftover need? You know, so when somebody else is paying for it, like, you know, the, the traditionally the, the parents of the bride pay for it, or at least in the past, and now they don't do that as much, mm-hmm. but you still feel like you have to have the same wedding. Mm-hmm. So now the couple feels like they still have to fill that void, if not make it bigger, but now they're, they're shouldering the burden themselves. And, and I know you say that a lot of people are more conscientious when it's their bill to pay, but I think if we look at, let's say, your credit card use and just housing and everything else, that that's not always the case, especially yeah. when you can put a wedding on a credit card for the most part. Yeah, I was, did. <laughs> I put my entire wedding on my credit card. Yeah, but, no, but you paid it off. You <laughs> probably still had room on your limit, though. I wanted the points. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, know, I think the, the stats show, too, that you know people are, are spending more. Just look at uh, the number of people that are actually coming up with a wedding budget in yeah. general. There's almost 25% of people aren't even making a wedding budget. They're just spending whatever. And of the people that do have a budget, almost half of them went over budget. Yeah. And, um, only you shouldn't put a party song on your parents, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's the thing. Only 25%, 25% of couples are staying within their budget. So, it, you know, right there, it goes to show that there's a lot of pressure for this day to be special, to be perfect, to have everything right. And so yeah. it becomes a thing where it, you know, money is not an object. They just spend, spend on whatever, it. and hey, we'll we'll pay it off later. We'll, we're gonna have the fun now. Yeah, but the industry also is designed to make you overspend as well. Their weddings and funerals, they get you at your most emotional, you know, point in life. And um, you know, that ring is on your finger. You feel the pressure of having that perfect day, and then you all spend the five thousand dollars on those flowers that are gonna die a couple hours after this thing is over. <laughs> You know, they get you, and you don't you don't realize it because you're spending emotionally, and you end up going over budget, like all those couples do. And it's, it's only a few it. hours, and those memories are going to last forever. Exactly. <laughs> you know, if you don't spend a lot on a photographer, what are you going to look at 20 years from now? <laughs> I was just going to comment on that, Glenn. That was my pet peeve when I was like, the, there's like flowers. There's obviously a lot of absurd things, but for some reason, photographer fees like really got to me. They like hit my nerve. I'm like, four thousand dollars, and then you get these people. This is what I love: people who are like got married 20 and 30 years ago, who are like, oh. You need the best because they have the best cameras. And I'm like, yes. my iPhone takes way better pictures than anything that was involved in your wedding 30 years ago. <laughs> Are your wedding pictures torched? Like, you guys look at them and enjoy them. So, 
Like, clear, sure. clearly, you may do. I could probably need to. And, and honestly, Kyle, that fourth <laughs> island that you're talking about probably is on a, maybe the lower side it's of some places. It's on a very <laughs> low end yeah. for, for targets these days. That's Canadian you know prairie price. Yes. <laughs> we spent a lot of money on our photographer. And I, you know, I think I picked up our wedding album maybe twice in 13 years that we've been married. I mean, it's it's crazy. Yeah, but like you, you're right, you're right, Sandy. They they play on the emotions, and you know we, we want to say that we're immune to it and that we're rational beings. Yeah, but we're so not. We're especially, not. <laughs> and especially when it's it's the two people together, and it's not just them, right? Yeah. Because then there's there's the the mother, the mother-in-law, the aunts, the uncles, the, the friends, everybody else saying you have to do this, you should do this, and look, it's not something that unless you've been maybe a bridesmaid or a groom often, <laughs> that you have a lot of information on. You know, like you buy a car, the next time you buy a car, you know, I'm not going to make that mistake again. Hopefully, you don't have to go through so many weddings that you have experience doing it's nowhere to cut costs. <laughs> well, you can do what I did before I got married. I just stopped going to weddings after a while. They cost me too much money. They do cost a lot to go to. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> so then by the time I got to my own wedding... All that fog had cleared, and there were no expectations of what I had to do. So basically, you're, you're, I only go to weddings with open bars, and that way I'm guaranteed to get a good value. <laughs> <laughs> so if I got this right, Sandy, the way you saved is you stopped going to other people's weddings. So this way you didn't have to invite all those people to yours. Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> well, is well, that a way to call a list? It's true, though. I, listen, I you know how much weddings cost in New York, Glenn, and everybody expects yeah. you to pay pay for your plate basically right mm -hmm. so if if there are two of you going to a wedding it's at least 150 they expect at least 150 dollars a person if you're talking more. about 300 bucks to go to somebody's wedding love you and, but <laughs> and, and, and if you have kids you're also paying a day for babysitting probably too exactly exactly you've got to get the babysitter you got to get a new outfit god forbid you're actually in the wedding you're spending a lot of money. Yep. I was just like, time out. Thank you. No, thank you. Love you. See you after the wedding. <laughs> well, not well, then, like... you can, then you can send a smaller present, right? Yes. <laughs> Wasn't so there, we had a great, a great sort of internal debate, uh, my wife and I, just to not against each other, but just trying to get the best result because we chose to do uh, a destination wedding, uh, as some of the listeners might remember. And... Uh, that's obviously very selfish uh, in some ways to ask people to come down. Um, but we tried, we really thought about it. We thought, now, this is a better value proposition. We picked a very modestly priced uh, resort, uh, we thought. And uh, we thought, okay, you know, you talk about your plate by the time you, you gift and you get there and babysitting. We thought a week-long vacation with all of your friends, uh, and, and we absolutely refused to accept gifts, um, Probably no one uh, under the age of 50 gave us a gift. Some of our, our grandparents and older aunts and uncles did. But other than that, uh, everyone respected that. And so we hope that that value proposition sort of even things out. But uh, definitely, I, I hear where you're coming from. We did feel some degree of guilt over that for sure. Listen, one of the best weddings that I would ever attended was with my best friend. And she had a wedding in Vegas. I had a great time. It was a small wedding. Um, we, like you said, it was like a mini vacation for, for everybody who attended. We hung out, we had a great time and they had a great time and they had less pressure and they spent less money. Um, so, you know, there's, I don't think it needs to be, you don't need to feel guilty per se because the people who want to go will go and they'll have a great time and they're, you know, they're having a destination. Um, I, that was what my um, husband wanted to do. He wanted to go away and just have a very small wedding and who could attend would attend. Um, but I actually wanted, more than just a few people who I know would attend to come um, because he wanted to go um, to the Caribbean. I know not a lot of people um, in his family had passports even to even attend. So um, having it here was, I'm, I'm going to say compromise, but but he didn't really compromise. I kind of forced him to. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> that's we'll, we'll, we'll quote that compromise because that's the that's the marriage compromise that you made. Yeah. <laughs> Right. The other the other cool thing about the destination wedding, uh, just to give some perspective for those that are considering it, is we got to spend like at least I don't know like four great experiences minimum with like every single person there, whether it was like zip lining through a jungle or sitting down for a great meal or whatever the case may be, uh, and give one on one attention. Whereas like what you were saying, Sandy, I spend three hundred dollars. I come to your wedding, I get to shake your hand and talk to yeah. you for five minutes, maybe, right? Yeah, yeah, you're one of a number. 
Yeah, yeah so I, there's pluses and minuses. But. We considered a, a destination wedding too, and the thought was, yeah, it's going to be smaller. And we even thought, even if we paid for everyone, it still might come out to less money than we would for a big full, uh, full blown wedding. Yeah. Because right? you're paying for so many less people, and and maybe they chip in some whatever, but it could still be uh, less money, and 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 like you said, Kyle, even more intimate, more uh, yeah. more time with family and friends. Um, we changed our minds because we found a venue that was a great deal. Um, so that worked out for us. But we were certainly considering the destination one as well. You know, I, I think a lot, a lot of people are starting to do that now. I think uh, the not the not survey you mentioned earlier also found that 25% of weddings these days are destination weddings. In part, I think, because you can do that. You combine you know, the wedding and then the reception and everything else all into one bundle. And a lot of times for the people getting married, it can be less money. I mean, you think about the and, average and wedding the honeymoon, costs, right? Yeah. And, right. The average wedding costs thirty-one thousand dollars, but that doesn't include the honeymoon. No. The average, the average honeymoon tab is another forty-five hundred dollars on top of that. So, I mean, when you do the destination yeah, like we wedding, went down, we went down a week package. early. Yeah. yeah, exactly, Peter. Sorry to cut you off there. Pause Goodbye. briefly. Uh, we, uh, yeah, we went down a week early uh, and did it that way. Um, and and I would certainly recommend that to uh, to anybody in terms of the honeymoon. And I would, I, our wedding cost actually uh, well under half. So I mean, not a, a super, um, not quite up to Sandy's level of excellence there, but certainly well under half, um, including rings, dresses, uh, honeymoon, and everything like that. So I mean, I thought that was a pretty good value for us, and I hope that it was a good value for our guests. Uh, you, you just can't beat uh, some of those Caribbean and Mexican places in terms of value for, for cash, uh, looking at like labor and food preparation costs compared to anywhere else in Canada and the USA. Yeah. It's just not even close. Yeah. So let's actually talk about uh, costs now. Um, you know, we've talked about general savings, but where did you actually save the money, Sandy? Like how did you cut certain things or, or did you really have to cut a lot um, I did. to make it happen? <laughs> Not going to lie, um, you're not going to have this um, Disney dream wedding on $5,000, not in New York City. Um, but you can have a great wedding, and I have, and I have great photos. So um, one of the first places that I cut cost was just simply on my dress. Um, I didn't spend a grand on my dress that I would wear for a couple of hours. I just I didn't have it in me. <laughs> I spent $313 on my dress. Um, landed and um, customized and everything for my dress from start to finish. And I saved that money by buying it um, on Etsy from a vendor in China who made everything to my specifications. So that's less than a lot of people spend for bridesmaids dresses. Yeah. Um, and that included the shipping and a $50 rush fee because I did my wedding <laughs> because I was so busy. <laughs> I planned my wedding in six weeks from start to finish. That's awesome. So, <laughs> so if, without the fifty dollar rush fee, it would have been two hundred something dollars. Um, definitely keeping my guest list smaller than the average bear uh, definitely worked out in my favor as well. We had forty people at our wedding, including the two of us. Um, so maybe I'm not going to have two hundred people, but um, that's okay. I don't know two hundred people who I like anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, well, isn't that a funny thing? Like with weddings, all of a sudden, you know, you've got like that that nineteenth cousin three times removed yeah. that like you didn't even know existed, yeah. and you, you have there's some pressure that you have to invite them. Exactly. Otherwise, there's going to be some kind of family feud or or some friend that <laughs> you know that person sure. you ran into in the hallways in college. You have to make sure that they know and that they they're there as well because you don't want to offend anyone. Exactly, and they don't come with their their three hundred dollar check like they're supposed to. <laughs> The photographers, we talked about photography. So I found my photographer on Groupon. I, I got a Groupon deal. And um and I didn't pay to have my photo pho photographs printed. They're all online. I'm not going to be flipping through I, I know myself, I'm not gonna be flipping through a book anyway. I'd just rather load up a digital frame somewhere and if I feel like looking at him in the pictures that day, then I can look at them. Uh, but I saved a ton of money uh, through that. And we also spoke about flowers. Flowers will get you every time. They get you. 
I just don't understand how much flowers can possibly cost of what they charge. Um, I saw uh, I saw florists and they want to charge the total cost of my wedding for just flowers. Didn't happen, buddy. Um, mm -hmm. I ordered them wholesale. And Costco, you can get flowers for your wedding from Costco. And they sell them wholesale at Costco. Um, and I had a garden wedding theme. So there was a lot of flowers everywhere. But I spent, I think, about $200 on a bathtub. And literally a bathtub. It's on Instagram. There's a photo there with my bathtub mm -hmm. full of flowers. So, you know, there, there are a lot of little things that added up to um, some serious cost savings. Well, one of the things, too, about the flowers is everybody's like, ooh, silk flowers, ew. But the reality is, no, I had them, too. And my bouquet is just as beautiful today as it was 13 years ago. <laughs> if I have to drag it out. It was just as beautiful it was as, as it was 13 years ago. The boutonnieres. I mean, we had we had... We had the wedding day, then the next day we had a reception in New York, then a week later we had a reception in Idaho Falls. And so it's like, you know, the boutonnieres, the corsages, my bouquet, everything just looked fine and traveled well because we used silk. And so that was, like you said, one of the big, you know, if we had used real flowers, everything would have been dead. We would have had to buy twice. Exactly. So, and there's, so that, there's that nothing that says well. you have to. You have to do the flowers either. I mean, you can do yeah. all sorts of non-floral decorations, you know, oh, yeah. do paper lanterns, candles. Yeah. And, uh, and when was the last time you thought cross. about a wedding and you went, you know what really, really struck out? What really got me was the flowers. Like, they had some awesome centerpieces. Well, you know that. why? Because like, you're you a don't, guy. You don't think about it. You're not there for the centerpiece. You're a guy. <laughs> well, that's the other this thing, though. True. We made... We, but, we didn't have flowers like, for our centerpiece, but we did it cheap. We did do-it-yourself centerpieces with just little glass marbles in little vase glass vases, right? It was you really. Didn't, you didn't make the guests make them, though. No. Oh, not that DIY. It was a crafting wedding. That would be that awesome. Would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's something for the kids to do. The kids make the centerpieces. You have to finish your beer, then make a vase out of it. That, yeah, that would be awesome. Oh, Actually, you know what? My centerpieces were all wine bottles going down the table nice. with um, awesome. flowers in them. And I got those all those um, wine bottles I got from an event that I attended, and they were going to toss them out. I was like, uh, what are you doing with the wine bottles? And they were like, uh, they're going in the garbage and the recycle. I said, I know somebody who could use those. <laughs> Dan, you have like a side business here, like thrifty wedding planning. Yeah, <laughs> look, I can do it. <laughs> you know, the bottles were free. Free cycle was also a great resource. In fact, I felt so bad. Like after my wedding, I still had, I think, 50 of them in my trunk. <laughs> so I free cycled it to some other people as well. You know, pass it along. Why toss them out? Sandy doesn't upsell, she downsells. No, you don't need none of that. You, you can do this. That, that's yeah, great. I bet that. you that looks sweet. <laughs> In fact, no. um, I didn't pay for my wedding cake. So having good negotiating skills really works well. I got the venue to toss in a cake, and the decor for my for the cake was some of the live flowers out of my $200 worth of flowers and a centerpiece, uh, a, a topper that came from India, and it was 20 bucks. Um, so. You know, if you negotiate well, you could save some money as well. Speaking of negotiating, I had my wedding on an off day, even though it was in the peak cycle. So I had my wedding on a Tuesday. What? Yes, a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> it was if you could if you could get off of work to come to my wedding, you're more than welcome. If you couldn't, too bad. I probably didn't want you there anyway. <laughs> if you're not important enough to take off work. Exactly. If I'm not important for you to waste half a day of work, because I also had it in the afternoon. That was the other thing as well. Um, I didn't have a late um, wedding. I had it. Uh, the wedding was between two and six, four hours. That was also limiting the amount of time as well. And having one venue, not going from one place for the ceremony and then another place for pictures and another place for reception. I could shorten the length of time that I needed. Um, for the entire thing and have still have a good time and send people home before they were drunk. <laughs> yeah, if you're aiming for that that June Saturday yeah. evening, you're in prime yeah. time, you're yeah. going to pay a lot of money. <laughs> Through the nose. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Forget about it. That's where you enter the sixty, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollar $70,000 range here in New York. Um, if you're willing to come, or and also surprisingly, um, New Year's and of course 
Valentine's Day. So those are also peak um, days as well. Interesting. Because yeah, you would not yeah. think, right? Well, we had ours December 30th. Ah, so you're one of those people. It was just before the prime day. Like, <laughs> they didn't have anything else to do on the 30th, I guess. Um, but we were able to get an awesome deal for it. Um, because it was in the winter. It yep. was off season. Um, they didn't have much else going on. You know, there was going to be prep for, for New Year's Eve. Yep. But other than that, um, we got things thrown in as part of our package. Yeah. That we would have had to pay extra for. Because But did you have the club money. going up on a Tuesday? Like Sandy? <laughs> I did. <laughs> it actually worked out to be a Friday night. So, uh, I was on Cinco de Mayo, so there was a lot going up. Everybody nice. was celebrating my day. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the venue was actually going to be closed because it was Cinco de Mayo. And I'm like, hey, I could put some money in your pockets. You want to be open on Cinco de Mayo? Yes, of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like the package that I had also, it, it included um, – a budget for the cake and included flowers. It included like all these different, you know, things that were in it that we didn't have to worry about. Or if we wanted to upgrade it, now it was our choice to upgrade instead yeah. of having to worry about each individual cost. Um, so it was certainly a good way for us to, to make it a lot more economical. Um, w- anything else that you did to, to help save it? Yeah, save it? I was pretty crafty. Um, kind of like Miranda, I made a lot of things, um, myself, even though I, I did everything within six weeks. And if you have friends who can pitch in, if you have um, friends with um, skills, then it, I think it's fair for you to lean on them if they can help you. Don't expect it. Ask nicely. Smile and say, <laughs> I have this lovely invitation to my wedding. If you can do this for me. Bribe <laughs> <laughs> them with the invitation to the wedding. <laughs> 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 I'll let you come to my wedding, to my party. Yeah. <laughs> you can do this. If you so, do some manual labor. Yeah, but you have to work on your So I made my invitations. Only you lucky ones are going to get the golden ticket, though. I made my invitations myself and saved a couple hundred dollars. Um, and I have an example here of a reply card. You can't see it because it's all like... Oh, no, we can now. Oh, very yes. nice. Very no, nice. looks good. So looks this good. is a reply card that I printed myself. And um, I, since I had a garden theme, I had flowers in my in their pressed flowers that you can barely see it on um, on um, special paper. But I printed them myself, and I put them together myself, and myself, and and customized things myself. So I saved myself a couple hundred bucks just on invitations alone, and on a lot of different things. I kind of did things myself. I wanted a floral belt for my my dress. And instead of spending the $75 that I saw it for at a wedding place, I went to Michael's. Michael's was my very best friend, especially because they allow you to stack coupons. And I made the belt myself for 20 bucks. Um, little things, if you can make things, um, economically, they will save you a lot of money from buying it from someplace else. Um, fiber, fiber is a friend. If you don't have the skills to maybe design your own invitations but you have five bucks sitting someplace crumbled um in your back pocket maybe you can pay somebody on fiber fiber to do it for you or do something similar and take something off your hands maybe it's a task rabbit that you're using to get things done um very inexpensively so you kind of have to think i know everybody says out the box but really thinking outside the box to get Mm -hmm. things done for cheap it does work yeah and i Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, and part of it, too, I think, um, too, because I am not a crafty person, and that's why that's why my centerpieces were just, you know, marbles in, a, in glasses, <laughs> because I am not a crafty person. And, and But I think the do-it-yourself thing really does help a lot. Um, my, my mom made my wedding dress. She's, she's an excellent seamstress. And so my mom made my wedding dress, and that made it easier. And... Just being able, and then when we did the tables, the uh, the the venue we chose first of all was free to us, so that helped. But that came with tables and white tablecloths, and so what we did was we just took uh, fabric swatches, like not swatches, but large fabric 
pieces of fabric and the colors I'd chosen and just did an overlay of the white tablecloth. So just a small square overlay so that it kind of added a little bit more to the white tablecloth. So just simple things like that are very inexpensive, but they can, and very simple, but they can, they still look nice. Yeah. And there's, there's no reason to spend a lot of money. Glenn and they're easy on, to just do your own. Glenn touched on something else too, was that if you can negotiate things into your package mm -hmm. and have things, provided by the venue, you can save a good bit of money. If you're renting, you know, a hall someplace, you have to provide a lot of things from, you know, from flatware and, you know, linen all the way up. And that stuff can really, really add up. For me, um, I had it at a restaurant and they had a wedding garden in the back that was gorgeous. Um, and so I didn't have to pay for you know, tablecloths and place settings and all these other things that you have to pay for when you're renting a venue. Um, I didn't have to think about any of that because it came with it, came with it you know, um, and that made things so much easier. The more you can get inside of your package, um, the better things are for you if you have a, a, a venue that puts packages together. If that's you have additional things. Sorry. Yeah. I was going to say, that's especially true with destination weddings too, I found. That be, like you think about, it, you got quite a bit of leverage because it's not just you uh, and your significant other that are staying there. You're bringing, you know, in in our case, uh, like twenty some guests uh, for an extended period of time. So they represent uh, a lot of opportunities uh, for that establishment. And you got some leverage if you are sort of crafty about negotiating and you don't mind sending a few emails and talking nicely to people. Uh, you can get a lot of stuff thrown in or a lot of free upgrades on stuff. Uh, yeah. Similar, similar to the the destination idea too was uh, we had our reception at a hotel. Right? They had a banquet area, but but it was similar where even if it was just one or two nights, we were telling them how many guests were gonna stay in this block of rooms, and and they gave us a, a discount on the on the hall based on that. So even even locally, you can kind of do that same trick to to work, mm -hmm. use the weight of that. But what is just out of curiosity, what is the what is the policy of a lot of hotels, though? If if you don't actually fill those rooms, you still have to pay for them, right? They may cancel your block. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure exactly that. <laughs> but, uh, I was just I was wondering how that works because I've heard sometimes they still make you pay for the rooms that aren't filled. Like if if you've guaranteed that a certain number of rooms are going to be filled and they give you a discount based on that. You know, you do you have to pay for that? That's that's this is a question I have and something to think about too. It's something that you probably just need to carefully plan for. Also, you know, you don't want to be you don't want to have the super gigantic extravagant wedding where you're thinking I'm going to need 200 rooms. You know, I'm going to need like the whole fifth the fifth or seventh <laughs> floor. So of course, you know, realistically, who is going to come into town? Who might really drive a long distance or fly? You know, you don't the have guy it you where. into the hallway in college. He's going to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's a free night totally. sitting somewhere and drinking. But um, <laughs> I mean, I guess that's part of your planning too. And, and you know, when you're negotiating these things, if you don't ask, you're mm -hmm. not going to get it. Because the first thing they're going to do is, hey, anything that has the the term wedding slapped on it is automatically more expensive. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. And, you know, it's funny you mentioned, you talk about invitations. That's one of them. I mean, invitations can easily be hundreds of dollars yes. for a piece of thick paper in an envelope with some printing on it. Yeah. Um, Electronic invitations are getting traction as well now. Um, people are used to getting e-bites. And there are some some sites that are built specifically just for electronic um, wedding invitations, and they're beautiful. You know, everybody's got email these days, um, and they're convenient if you don't want to, you know, mail an invitation. Mm -hmm. I think that if you have older guests, though, and and if you're traditional, there's still something about getting that invitation in the mail. So I literally, even though this person did not come to my wedding and was not invited. I have an invitation sitting here at my desk because um, this is my um, husband's aunt and she's older, she's in her 60s, and she just wants that invitation, right? Even though she didn't come, she wasn't invited. But <laughs> she still wants that invitation, that paper. There's something about it, especially when you're older, and, and there is something to it. But electronic invitations is another way to go. Yeah, I mean, it is it's nice. electronics. <laughs> Uh, just because we wanted to make sure people were planned like a year out. So yeah. we did electronic save dates. I thought they worked awesome. Uh, and they had like the 
sweet feature where you were just supposed to hit reply and say like, yeah, we'll be there or whatever. And then we did a little more, uh, you know, uh, traditional friendly, uh, invitations, um, for the, the real deal. But it was funny because then I had to coach my mom through opening them for several of my relatives who had like the craziest email addresses with like little local. It was the weirdest thing I've ever done in my life. So it might be easier to just get like six, save the dates, like print them on your computer and send them if you're going to go that route. Yeah. <laughs> and I think there's so many options out there with online printing and such that you can find things. I mean, it's it'll still cost you some money, yeah. but so much less expensive than going to a venue that prints out invitations and sitting there, you know, if you've ever seen one of these places, you go like to the back of the store, the office, and it's just 16 books full of invitations and you try to figure out what it is you want, different fonts. I mean, that, I think that process in its own is, in, is maddening. But you didn't even need to do that. Like I said, I did mine in six weeks and I call myself the Google, my wedding, the Google wedding. If it wasn't on Google, it wasn't in my wedding. So I found my invitations on Amazon. In fact, I had the box still here because I'm still full of wedding stuff, wedding invitation kit. Um, and it cost me 20 something bucks for a box of invitations. Got ribbons at Michael's to spruce them up, whatever. So you don't even need to go into one of those places anymore. Maybe because Glenn's so much older than I am. No, I'm just about. saying. <laughs> no, no, that's, I I'm mean, that was my thing too. There. I'm <laughs> that I'm much older, but I'm just saying that that option is maddening too. Like, you know, you just, I'm saying you don't have to do that. Um, yeah. you, you, you can go your route, the DIY route, DIY route, or you go online and do it. You're yeah. having so much choice. That's what gets me about the wedding too. And, and I think that's where the emotions start to play in and the, the purse dollars start to open up. Oh yeah. Because everything is a thousand different options. Yeah. And by the time you get towards the end, you're so emotionally spent planning the whole thing. That you just like, look, just take it. Just, here. Just take well, it. That's a guy reaction. Not worth it. It's not worth it. <laughs> yeah. No, but, you know, it's like, uh, I gotta make all these decisions on flowers. I gotta make decisions on the, the music. I gotta make, it's, it's too much. It's, no, no, you know, that's a guy reaction. There's a woman sitting there like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for the wedding book so I can open and see what the invitation <laughs> options are. <laughs> you know, I was watching something with uh, a wedding expert and that was one of her big suggestions was if you want to save money on your wedding, shorten the timeline so that you're forced to simplify the wedding. Yeah. Because that way, a lot of options that you might have gone for before are not even going to be available because you have to book them a year or two years out. Mm -hmm. You're going to be forced to try to find a, a cheaper venue that isn't typically going to be booked uh, further out. You're going to not have time to buy all these complex favors and all this other stuff because you just don't have time. So that could be one way to uh, shorten it up. Like you said, you did yours in six weeks, and that, that might have uh, played in your favor in some ways because you didn't have time to do a lot of more expensive things. Yeah, but I think in some ways it took a lot of stress out of the process because it um, it forced me to make decisions right away, right? So it wasn't, oh, I can do this, or I can do this, or maybe I'll do that, oh, I don't know. No, it was find something, make a decision, got it done next. When's it going to be delivered? <laughs> that was pretty much what it was. A, a friend of mine, when I was getting married, told me, he said, no matter how much time you have, that's how long it's going to take to plan the wedding. Yeah. If you've got three years, it's not like, oh, you know, we'll wait two years. No, it's going to take you three years to plan the wedding. If you have three weeks, it's going to take you three weeks. Like, whatever time you have, that's what's going to fill up. I, is that Parkinson's law? I, I, I can't recall. But it's something like, whatever time you have, that's what it's going to fill up with. Um, right. But, you know, I think what Peter's saying, like, by having that time constraint, you make that decision, you move on, and there's no time for regret because so you got to do the next thing and make sure it's planned. You know. Well, and the next thing too, uh, Sandy did. I I took eight weeks instead of six, <laughs> so Slacker. and he did it two weeks faster. <laughs> but but part of that too is going along with that, and not just about the money, but just the stress level. Yeah. Yes, you feel like you're going, and you're just going for those those uh, eight weeks or six weeks. But at the same time, it's over, yeah. and you know it's going to be over, and you know it's going to be over fast. I can imagine. I've seen people with like. Uh, in my community, like a six month engagement is a long engagement. And so <laughs> in the community I grew up in and I've seen them for those six months, just be stressed out for the entire six months or the entire year because they're like, Oh my gosh, I don't have 
you know, I don't have enough time for this and it's taking forever and I'm so stressed. And for me, it was like, yeah, okay, so the two months was really hectic, but it was done and over with and I didn't have to stress about it for as long. Yeah. So that was, that was nice, kind of a non-monetary benefit. The stress was much shorter. <laughs> Sandy, I think... I'm kidding, fast weddings. I think you're onto something here, though, Sandy. In this age of brand loyalty, you're you're going with the Google wedding, and you dropped some some Michael stuff in there. I mean, like if you just throw like boxes, do like Michaels across the back of your wedding dress, like you could think about the weddings. prime real but they estate. Do that you could just get it for free. Just get it for free. Brought to you by. That's true. But they do have, but they do have some of those sponsored weddings now. They where, do. What? They do. Yeah, they do. Listen, does you've not heard of those? Star Jones is. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> Everything in her wedding was sponsored. Yeah. So, you know, not just celebrities. Yeah, you can, yeah, I've seen it where you can, you know, you, you either put it on, like you have your wedding website and you put all your sponsors on your wedding website. When people come to visit, they have to come to visit to RSVP or say how many seats are going to be there. And so everybody sees that, or you have like signage at your wedding that are like flowers provided by, they just, you know. I can do it. As cheap as I am, first one to admit, cheap. <laughs> I can do it. That's Although Michaels, that, yeah. pay me, they feel free because I spend enough money on Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and another thing too is like the wedding cake that we had in Idaho Falls was basically my wedding gift. So the, the the person who made the cake made it as the wedding gift. So it was kind of part of that too. So if you can kind of look at reach out to your network and if your network people in your network have these talents and stuff, kind mm-hmm. of what Sandy was saying, you know, you can have an invite to my wedding if you help out. It's sort of the same sort of thing, you know, okay, we're good buddies and you have this great skill. Don't worry about getting me a present, just do this thing for me. <laughs> exactly. But, and it doesn't even have to be like so, you know, it, People are willing to do that too. Oh, yeah. And it works oh, for yeah. them. You know, if you know somebody that bakes cakes, if you know somebody who's a DJ, whatever they have, it's like, you know, it's like sponsorship without like the words on the back of your dress. And yeah. you can say, look, you know what? If you're willing to make the cake, I don't mind if you put out some cards, you know, when people are leaving, you know, because yeah. somebody here is going to get married at, you know, at some point or other or have some other party. So feel, you know, go ahead. Yeah. You know, I'll make sure that everybody knows that you're the one who made my cake or that you were the DJ or that you provided the car service or whatever. And it becomes very valuable for them because word of mouth is better than advertising. That's Any true. other types of advertising. And, and listen, when it comes to a wedding, if your friends have a talent, nine times out of ten, they are more than willing and usually flattered that you'll ask them to do something for their wedding. Um, I find that people... Um, people get just excited for you as well, and if they think, okay, this is my contribution to your wedding, then they feel good about it as well, you know? They want to help. That's not to say you're going to tell somebody, oh, I'm going to want a five-tier wedding cake, and it's got to have little people on it, and I want all this stuff. You know, don't go crazy. <laughs> um, if you're reasonable, I think people are more than willing to pitch in and help um, towards the last, actually, the last week. Um, before the wedding, um, my husband's um, aunt would come over and help because I was making favors, and she knew that every night I was sitting there making favors myself. And she just would just come over and help. I never asked her to, but she said, you know, she really wanted to to do this. She wanted to feel like she was part of the, the wedding and, you know, make it her little contribution. So, you know, people will help you. You know, it's funny. In the beginning of the show, you talked about how, you know, the joy and love of the event. Mm-hmm. And I think think a lot of times we, we do all these extravagant things and that maybe takes away from that. Yeah. Whereas like what we're talking about now, when you're getting like when, you, when your aunt is coming over to help you make favors, like that is so much more intimate and so much more of a bonding experience yeah. that, you know, no bouquet of flowers can match that. Exactly. You know, in my opinion. Exactly. And don't, it doesn't matter what you save. It really is about the joining of the families and, you know, the two people. For me, I, I specifically chose a $5,000 budget because I was focused on what would happen after the wedding. So the event was a great thing. But for me, the important part was what happens after 
as we're together, you know, to start our lives. What's where's the focus? So the focus for us is really, um, you know, building a foundation, whether it's you know for a home or a family or whatever it is. And if we spend all the money on a wedding, we would have had not the right start, I think, for everything else that we wanted to do after we were married. So, you know, in focusing on what was most important for us, it was, it was, you know, our relationship and everything else beyond the wedding that was most important for us. And if we spent it all at the wedding, we wouldn't be able to do anything that we really want to do after. And I think that's an interesting point because so many people are like, oh, but it's, you know, it's one day and it's, it's this day will only happen once and we've got to spend so much money and, you know, my, and I guess if that's your priority and you want to spend that much money for this one day that will never happen again, uh, we hope, right? Except for 50% um, of people who get divorced. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, <laughs> but it, it's like, uh, you know, that, that's fine if that's your priority. But at the same time, in my mind, I'm just like, yes, it's only one day. Why would you blow so much money on one day? That you're going to be paying for for so many more. For so many more. The debt won't live for one day. Yeah, the debt's going to be there right. for maybe a whole the, week or two. Right, and the interest and the interest <laughs> that you pay on that debt, especially if you carry it for two or three years. Yeah. So what you do is you charge a cover charge, or as people are coming in, you collect the one fifty to three hundred at the door, <laughs> or you don't let them out. So you can the money for your wedding. <laughs> Quote unquote valet and you take all the car keys. That's right. <laughs> but you know, that's an interesting point. You know, it's what do you want to do afterwards? I think for a lot of married couples, you know, you get married and, and things change and it's a lot of different pressures and you're getting really used to who you are with this other person and you're melding your life and to throw in debt on mm -hmm. top of that. I think a lot of divorces are a result of money issues. Yeah. And now you're saying, well, here's thirty thousand dollars that's over us now. Yeah. On top of everything else, maybe you want to buy a new house eventually. Maybe you know you're, you're furnishing things or whatever. Um, that's a lot of pressure to start off with. It is. You're starting in debt, <laughs> and I couldn't, I couldn't see. I couldn't see doing it to us, like starting off with twenty, thirty thousand, and it could very easily have been thirty thousand dollars minimum for me. You know, I saw, I saw a bunch of my relatives the other day, unfortunately, at a funeral, and some people were really, really ticked off that they didn't get invited to my wedding. Like I said, two thirds of our guests was was my husband's. Um, I limited my the amount of guests on my side because I have a huge family, and I knew that if I invited, I could not invite one sibling and not the other sibling. You know, things like that. Um, so I was very picky on who I invited. I invited some, I invited their parents, the aunts and uncles, like the older generation of people and not, you know, my peers because there's so many more of them. Um, yeah, it just, it, the wedding, I think ultimately it's not really about the wedding. It's about the marriage. The wedding is a bonus, I think, on top of this relationship that and the life that you guys are crafting together. And if you can do it in a way that it doesn't um, start your your marriage off um, on you know footing that's not sure because as we said you know there are a lot of couples who divorce because of financial issues. You want your your marriage to start off on a good foundation, and if you're starting off rocky because you spent thirty to seventy thousand dollars on your wedding, it's not the best footing. That's a that's a great point there, and, and I think you know we're hitting up on an hour here. So, um, you know, we've certainly gone through a lot of uh, great talk on weddings. I tried to make it so that we weren't just talking about what we're costs are, but maybe, you know, why we spend the money and, and why we shouldn't. Um, what we do here is we go around and we do a final word. So um, as a little wrap up. So, Tom, if you could give us your final word on saving on marriage costs, wedding costs. Yeah, we we're, we're quite happy because we basically didn't pay regular price for anything. We thought we saved all this money, but... Just like any spending, really, you, just because you're saving money doesn't mean you're not spending money. So you got to, uh, we, we found we'd be buying extra stuff. Oh, well, that, we're getting this half off and stuff like that. <laughs> so, so you got to watch that kind of, uh, spending creep up on you, even if you're supposedly getting it on a sale. And Peter, what's your final word on saving on your wedding? Oh, my final word is just to keep, keep things simple. Make it more about, uh, make the day more about people and community. Then about the things and the, the sparkly decorations and the flowers and 
the DJ and all that other extraneous stuff. You know, make sure it's more about talking to your spouse and about what's coming after, like Sandy was saying. Just uh, try to try to keep focus on the other person in front of you and, and not everything that's surrounding you. And Miranda, what's your final word on saving <laughs> for a wedding or on a yeah. wedding? Yeah, like with so many other things in personal finance, figure out what is important to you. One of the things that we kind of didn't talk about was when you're negotiating with your with your partner and when you have kind of different priorities, mm-hmm. figure out which thing is most important to each of you and those two are the things that you are say, okay, well, these are the <laughs> things that we'll make sure we have and then the rest of the stuff can go if we don't have the budget for it. And so just kind of think about that and think about what's really important about the, the day itself and, you know, like Peter said, I mean, you do want to focus on the people and your union, but at the same time, if you're going to have this production around it, you also need to pinpoint what are the deal breakers and what's most important for you. And Kyle, what's your final word on saving on wedding costs? I guess, you know, you've watched too many Freakonomics episodes when you start thinking about the utility of your wedding ring budget. And basically, uh, for my wife and I, I would get very little utility out of my ring. I, I don't like wearing a ring. I'll wear one out if we're going out. But So I got, I, I think it's a fine ring. It's a tungsten. It did the trick. It, it was the circle and marriage and blah, blah, blah that, that everyone hears every wedding, right? But uh, so we took the money from that. Instead of saving it like Sandy would and, and probably investing it and in being rich 40 years, we... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we took that and we spent it on my wife's ring. It made her quite happy. Uh, she gets a ton of utility out of it. She she loves the ring, and uh, both of us are much more enjoyable than if I would have a fancy ring sitting on the shelf all the time. So. And Sandy, if you'll close out our final word on uh, saving for wedding costs. Um, discuss with your spouse or your future spouse what's important to the both of you and get on the same page and do it early. Don't have two different ideas for your wedding because you haven't been discussing, you know, along the way. And when you guys have a meeting of the mind, then go out and do what it is that you want to do. You can't have a bride that's here and a spouse that's here, or in my case, a spouse that wants to spend this much. And the bride wants to spend this much. And isn't that like just a great example of how marriage is supposed to be anyway, right? Yes. You need to start making those compromises and that and certainly your wedding is a great way to start that. Sandy? Or at least, or at least pretend that you're compromising, right? And make them think it was their idea. <laughs> That's part of the compromise, I think. Um, Sandy, for, for those out there that may not be familiar with the SMI I Am Cheap, um, pl- please tell them about your site and, and what it is that you do. Just like saving money on my wedding, I talk about different ways to save money um, on your day-to-day life. And most importantly, if you are in debt, practical ways for you to get out of debt and save money along the way. Nothing that's too crazy or insane. Um, very simple things to do. Um, very practical things to do that can really um, help you save big. Thank you again, Sandy, for joining us and sharing your expertise with our audience. And for everybody else, until next week, be good with your money. Good night. Thanks for joining us on the Money Mastermind Show. Get more information at moneymastermindshow.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes and YouTube and follow us on Google+.